What's up, guys? I'm Alex. I'm Jason. We're the Table Monkeys, and this is Table Talks episode fucking 40. Dude. Can you believe it? 40? I can't believe we've done 40 of these fucking things. This is, when did we start this? What, like doing Table Talks? Yeah. Not long after, like only a couple weeks into yeah. doing the channel, I think. so. And we, ha- we haven't done one be. exactly every week, yeah, but yeah. it's been almost every week. And So if you haven't heard one of these before, the way we work, or the way it works, sorry, is that we just talk about whatever the fuck we feel like talking about uh, while we watch all the pulling that we did uh, yeah. in our past practice. Basically in our wrestling podcast usually yeah. we uh stick to something relevant to arm wrestling and we're gonna try to do that today yeah yeah, yeah. so Talk this about was training this is all footage from uh bal 302 302 the after also pulling. known as toronto domination <laughs> yeah we, we kind of kicked ass yeah we kicked ass yeah, yeah that's true the what was, that? was it uh, toronto five and oh six, no six, i think it was eight 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 no eight and oh wow eight, no. yeah wow. yeah it was pretty good yeah and how many rounds did we lose like one, I think total we only lost four rounds, maybe four five. Rounds. I have to check again. But either way, that's enough of the gloating. We did do, <laughs> we did do pretty good. Toronto showed up strong. We released that uh, GTA coming in hot video the day before, and we don't like to talk. Most of the guys on our team, we don't have really shit talkers. No, um, and uh, we don't like to talk too much shit because then you got to back it up, and uh, nothing looks worse than talking a bunch of shit and then getting look yeah you know, look we, like a bitch so and we've seen that quite a lot yes there have been a wrestling. few people we're not gonna <laughs> name any names or post any uh comments yeah. this, in this video but, but we could and it would uh, yeah it would be hilarious yeah. uh but the point is group chats and uh yeah they yeah, get rough they get rough yeah they get hilarious um the point is that uh we released that video and luckily we were able to back it up yeah uh again did we mention 8 no? Yeah, we went I think we did mention yeah. it. We got yeah. a couple of our guys on the rankings now, Miguel yep. and Ale- Alexander. Yep. Yeah, those two. So we had two guys that were actually going for rankings. Yep. So Miguel, uh, 19 now? Is he 19? I think he's, he's turning still 18. 19. Yeah. He's still 18, he right? Still so Miguel is still 18, I think. And uh, Alexander just turned 16. Yep. And they're both, they both walk around, like right around 165. Yep. Um, and they both pulled Andre, who uh, is ranked 154 on both arms. Um, I think he's seventh and sixth. Sixth, right, seventh on right, sixth on. Yeah, he's higher on left. Yeah, higher on left, yeah. right. Um, and uh, and he put up his ranking spot. He made weight. They all made weight. Uh, Twenty four hour weigh in. Um, we did it over the phone, like over video and stuff. So everybody sent in a video of them weighing in, and uh, and both guys won their matches. Uh, so we'll see where they end up on the rankings. I don't think it's going to be an exact like switch for spot. No, uh, because that's well, not maybe how... for, uh, it should be for Alexander because he absolutely dominated. This is true. Yeah, yeah, Alexander could. You could make an argument for like top five for that kid right now, which yeah. is absolutely ridiculous. Anybody in the 154 list, watch yeah. out for this guy because yeah. he's coming yeah. for your I'm, I'm not spots. saying that he can take like Matt Smith or anything yet, but uh, Matt Smith would feel him. Matt yeah. Smith would feel him for sure. Yeah. Matt Smith would deal with him, but he would feel him. Yes, there's no question. And um, and that was that was amazing. So and then we had guys defending spots. You defended a spot. Yeah, yeah. I put my left arm ranking spot on the line, and I was I was unsure about it because last time I felt Nick, he was dominant. Left handed, uh, left handed, yeah. but yeah. Um, but that was again. We mentioned this before. You had just finished training, or only a month after training for a marathon, and you hadn't really dedicated to your uh, your hand vectors yet, as mm-hmm. you had recently. So you know, since you pulled uh, Nick last time, you dedicated uh, to your diet heavily. Uh, lots of food. Yep. Lots of protein. Yep. For sure. Um, protein intake matters, guys. 50 grams, five times a day. If you're not doing it, do it. If you have any intention of being a strong motherfucker. Exactly. Yeah. If, you're, if you're a little bit lighter than us, then four 40, times a day. 40, yeah. <laughs> or 40 grams, five times a day. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. maximize that protein synthesis. It's the only way to gain uh, actual strength. Yeah, and we are athletes, and yeah. uh, well, we are almost strength athletes, but yeah. pretty much, right? So you yeah. got to get that protein intake. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and you have. You've been getting that in yeah. and working your hand. You started adding, so you do your hand twice. You still do that? Is that still a, like a daily routine? routine or have you switched that up a bit because of the table time now like the pulley sessions yeah so now because i've added uh pulley sessions with with actual weights and i can go heavy um i'm s- still doing daily hand vectors and then on the days i, pu- I do pulley training i also do an extra day so it's not like the 10 days the 10 sessions a week that it was oh, okay it's now like seven or six oh, okay okay yeah. so it's a few less but that's what you did for a long time right it was twice yeah. a day five days a week uh hand vectors and makes a difference uh that consistency you know? yeah and uh i was dominant against yeah. nick on left yeah back arm. to the matches yeah, yeah. You, you absolutely dominated him on left you went you went through it a little fast looking back you uh kind of wanted to uh extend maybe one of those rounds a bit right yeah i wasn't even thinking about it i was i was 
so so focused. Yeah, it's just wanted to fucking. I wasn't thinking about anything but winning. Just finish the match. Yeah, and uh, I'm honestly, happy I did that. Yeah, no, that's the right way to be. Even if yeah. it's a close match, uh, obviously, like arm wrestling is fun to watch when the matches get longer and they yeah. get exciting. So there is some of that should be in there, but um, you know, there's you could you could win the first two rounds like that. Do that on the third round. End up giving him one or two things exactly. too much. Lose that round. Have lost too much energy, and then all of a sudden be in a dicey situation. Um, and how, and how fucking embarrassing would that be? <laughs> yeah, that's never good, right? That's yeah. never good. So uh, unless you just unless you really know that the person doesn't belong on the table with you, which isn't the case with Nick. You no. and Nick are gonna go back like. I don't know if you'll go back and forth, but he's. You guys are going to be in the same weight class and fighting on the table a long time. Yeah, uh, and I think he, I feel like it. It could go back and forth for sure. He's, he got, had, he's got all the potential. Yeah, and he had just gone out of the military a couple months prior. Um, yeah. I feel like he definitely needed more time to prepare for that match. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're definitely going to have matches. Uh, in the future, yeah, and, uh, yeah, we'll see. Maybe it does go back and forth. He comes back. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you guys aren't going to sleep on each other, no. and you guys will have hopefully a long, long-lasting rivalry. Yeah, um, and then Dustin defended his spot yes. against uh, Robin. Robin was supposed to pull Mike Smith, which wouldn't have been for rankings, um, and he decided, you know what, Mike Smith not strong enough for me at left <laughs> arm. I need a challenge. He challenged. Uh, I said, well. Uh, he wanted to go for Ray Belmore, but just based on things, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to make that happen. So I said, "I know Dustin will pull you, and he's one, you know, one higher than Ray." So, yeah. and he uh, his response back was, "Well, I hope he's a challenge for me." So, and it was a good match. Uh, he definitely put up a challenge for Dustin. Dustin couldn't sleep on him, and nope. uh, it was he got around and uh, and caught his hit, brought him back, yeah. brought Dustin back. It was a good match. I think it was just Dustin's explosiveness and yeah. hand domination that got him yeah. the win there. Yeah, but, Dustin's yeah. hand is awesome, uh, and his uh, his hit when it when it's go time yeah. is is really good so and and once they got to the strap like i think dustin doesn't like uh, he, I don't think he thinks about going to the strap, but because we practice so much in the strap now, his strap game's actually really good. Yep. And once they put the strap on, that was like even that was clear that they they were they didn't seem very close in the strap to be yep. honest. Um, and uh, and then uh, was, what, what else was for rankings? Mike Smith wasn't for rankings no, because no. they they didn't pull. Uh, was there another one that I'm missing or the? Uh, I wrote them down. Kevin, oh, D- Dylan. That wasn't our guys, but oh, Dylan right. McClutchin and Joseph Spoljar was for rankings. So Dylan. Uh, made up. He should make up some rankings because he's not technically ranked on left. Right. Yeah. He beat. He, he, beat he Joseph. destroyed Joseph on left, and Joseph's I think eighth or something like he's ranked on there on left. So, Dylan should be making the left-handed list 198, uh, and then uh, Joseph is way outranks him on right arm. Uh, and he's, he's defended his spot. And he defended his spot yeah. convincingly. Yes. Yeah. Um, Joseph but, <clears throat> should be contending for the number one spot on right arm. Yeah, I, I think. think. I think. Well, Tyler Bolzan is number two right arm, right on, on no, or three. Three, I think. Yeah. So I think we want to. I know Tyler wants that match. I think we really want to see that match That'll happen first, match. and then I would say whoever wins that match can then challenge. Uh, I guess Allen, right? Allen Ford, Ford is yeah. still number one on on one ninety eight. Yeah. Yeah, I want. I wonder who uh, that would be. I want to see him pull somebody big. That'd be yeah. that'd be awesome on right arm. Um, yeah. So I think that was the last ranked match. Kevin Carrier and Darrell. Oh, Kevin also. Carrier, that was ranked. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm forgetting about and all these. Kevin just got uh, he got smashed by Darrell three yeah. zero. Yeah. And I th- he was he above? Was Darrell no, above Kevin? No, no. Right Kevin right? was above. Kevin, Kevin was, was above Darrell. Uh, um, and it was the other way around on left. Right. Darrell was above Kevin on on left. So. Um, and then, uh, well, Darrell then pulled uh, Anthony on left because Kevin Kevin had said he couldn't pull, and then like right before he said actually maybe he can, but Anthony had already taken the match, so we let Anthony uh, and Darrell pull, and that was an exciting uh, match. Yeah, it was man. a fun match to watch. Even even a match that ended on fouls, it was still a really exciting match. I mean, um, I think again another start like like Darrell clearly needed to catch Anthony off guard, which once Anthony was fired up, I don't think that was going to happen again. Um, so. Even if they had got a start in the third round, I'm pretty sure Anthony was going to catch him and, and, you know... I think so, too. Freight train him across the table, but... Uh, we got to get Anthony to fucking slip. Just I know. It, slip yeah, 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 I know. I know. we got to work, would... work him in the strap. Yeah. And he works on the strap a lot, but yeah. it's, it's the idea of getting there. I think he just... Uh, he loves the, uh, like... The, 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 the fight, the challenge. He doesn't want to give anything up. And also just the... Um, I think the... How imposing it is to just 
grab somebody yeah. and catch them like that. You know, yeah. he just loves to impose his strength on people like that. But again, this is a combat sport, not a strength sport. I think there's it's never more apparent than that when strengths are even. Mm-hmm. As soon as strength is close enough, then it becomes an actual fight and a combat sport. If you're not strong enough, then you're not in the fight. It's like bringing a knife to a gunfight. It's just not worth it. But if if you're close to your opponent, it's become so much about strategy and technique and mind games and you know so much more than just performing a lift. You know exactly. And uh, and I think Anthony, when he really finds that fight part of it, uh, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna open up so many doors for him, and he's gonna have access to all his strength in a different way. It's gonna be really frightening. Totally agree. Yeah. And he's um, uh, another one of the <clears throat> Toronto boys. Yeah. Toronto. 8-0. 8-0 as we did mention. Yeah. yeah, it was a good day for us, I gotta be safe. Hey, and we're our club is less than has less than two years experience. Yeah, literally. Other than okay, so Dustin, I think total experience might be more than two years, but he had his broken arms and like two years off in there. Yeah, I think he's like and five then, or six yeah, years. Yeah, and then Anthony, uh technically I think like his first competition is a few more it's like three or four years ago. Um but for the like the bulk of our group, you and me, the Babbitts, the yeah, everybody Lewis, that pulls with Mike, Lewis, yeah. Mike. We're all two years experience, yeah. more or less. I'm not even at my, my two year mark. Uh, will be the the um, 12th of July is my first practice that I did ever. So I've still got you know I've still yeah. got a month to so go. We've got a bunch of guys now on the rankings. We're we're making waves in Ontario. Yeah, I, I'm willing to bet that there's very few teams in North America that could with could, two years could, less experience yes. that could put all their pullers two years less experience or if there is a, are clubs out there that have actual two years less experience I mean I'm sure there are some good clubs that have guys that have been pulling with them for less than two years because they have so much experience in the club yes, that might course. be able to put up good fights with us which we want like like, but uh, but yeah for a club with less than two years experience I just I want to know I'm not saying that they don't exist I'm saying we yeah. don't know where they are or who they are so uh, that would be interesting to see but um, but we didn't go against slouches you know this was no. uh, uh, this was good competition, and uh, and we're not ranked because uh, we're kissing ass or anything. We're ranked because we're winning matches and and uh, and improving f- tournament to tournament. And uh, a lot of that, I think, comes down to you know training science and uh, training methodology. And there's um, there's like six or seven guys in our in our club that have you know strength training experience, yeah. uh, or have gone to school for it, physiology yeah. and stuff like that. And I think it, I, I think it's paying off. I think yeah, there's a lot to be said for that. We're treating arm wrestling like a sport, like we're athletes, and and not just it's a, not a hobby. So yeah. we see it differently. Yeah, and I think that plays a huge role. We you know we know how much training is the right amount of training and where it can get. Well, out. to say we know is is maybe okay. a stretch. We're True. trying to figure it out, and we're approaching it from that mentality and that's definitely been the hardest thing to figure out True, yeah. is where is that line because uh, again like I said earlier it's not really a strength sport but you have to be strong so how do you strengthen yourself while practicing your fighting techniques while not damaging your body too much so that you can actually like uh, recover like adequately right because yeah. that's one of the issues I think and I think a lot of people that spend too much time on the table beating themselves up too much uh, what they might not realize is how much even though they, they, they're always gonna like no matter how beat up you are as long as you don't injure yourself whatever work you do will instill some more adaptation that's true but there becomes a point where the amount of recovery that you're uh, that is required that you're forcing upon yeah. yourself for that Adaptation, the, the ratio isn't good enough, you know, like the, yeah. the like if curve. it takes two weeks to recover from one session because you beat yourself up so much, well then you, there's there's no uh, you're not getting any benefit from training in that two weeks. You're just trying to recover from that extreme session and yeah, you know, you're reducing the amount of volume that you could get in if you weren't trying to recover. Yeah, so like to, to make, to put numbers to it, just to make it like kind of uh, something you can visualize, let's say that you do a training session that allots you 12 pounds of adaptation, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, versus, but it's going to require you to re- two weeks to recover versus another session where you could acquire eight pounds of adaptation, right? But you'll be able to do that session again in a week. Like right. it only requires one week of recovery. Well, if you were to accumulate a year of training, you're going to be a lot stronger going eight pounds a week than 12 pounds every two weeks. Of course. It's just simple math. Yeah. And that's basically what, what, the, the, this point is is there is a there is a strength or a, like an adaptation curve in the sense that like 
just to throw numbers out there again, because we kind of study this shit, somewhere between 10 and 20 sets per body part is kind of the ideal range. And after 20 sets, that curve really starts to, uh, it doesn't drop off and it doesn't necessarily ever run flat, but it stops in, uh, its incline. Yeah. At, like it starts to decrease its incline really aggressively. And that's that point that we're talking about where you're only increasing a few pounds of adaptation, but you're required a whole extra week or two weeks of recovery. And worst case scenario is you actually injure yourself. You're exactly. And it's so easy to overtrain and injure yourself in arm wrestling because you can train every day. You're training small muscle groups. So you're thinking, well, I can train my forearm every day. I can yeah. train upper body as well. Um, and then arm wrestle once, twice, three times a week, you know. Yeah. You and, can... and because it's tendons and ligaments that you're using in a lot of these positions, you don't realize how... Uh, like the recovery time for them is so much longer and they don't feel the same like when a muscle is sore You can feel it when you flex it You don't know that a ligament or a tendon is not fully recovered until you push it mm -hmm. and it goes wow Wow, wow, and you go. Oh shit that fucking hurt. Yeah, right So it's really easy to, to not realize that maybe not be warmed up enough and then you know Push it too hard and have something pop. Yep, you know and you can train super hard and practice to the point where guys that are way beneath you guys that you usually just laugh at are yeah. pinning you yeah and at that point well you're, what are you getting out of training yeah it'd be like doing a squat workout working up to your max which is 500 and then doing 500 until you can't do it then going down to 450 doing 450 once and then the next time it crushes you and then going down to 400 doing it a couple times and it crushes you and then before you know it you're down at like 300 pounds and you're not even able to squat the 300 pounds and okay, maybe you've heard of some like grueling crazy workout where somebody did some shit like that, but that's exactly it. That's like, maybe you do that once a year before you know you're gonna take three or four weeks off mm -hmm. and you're just trying to like absolutely destroy yourself. But the point is that you can't, you can't train like that no. it, week in and week out and you can't train like that consistently because the, like the math example we just did, it's not actually gonna yeah. make sense I feel like the there's like an idea in, in arm wrestling that if you're not beating the shit out of yourself every week that you're not training correctly yeah. and that could be further from the truth like yeah. working harder is not always working smarter yeah. like you gotta you gotta periodize you gotta body regulate you gotta keep your body healthy so you can go to each practice and make progression yeah and, and, and maybe the progression that you make in a practice isn't in the strength factor maybe you pushed your strength during the week with the weights and so now at practice you're just going to work your technique yeah and and maybe and there's there's so many different combinations of ways to assemble how you train and if you just look at arm wrestling like all the different arm wrestlers in the world how many people like how many different versions of training are there you know yeah. um I think one thing like periodization I think is the key so one of the things just if you want to like try to get something out of this uh, sort of rambling that we've been doing is there's really kind of like I think of them I think of there's like four sort of areas of training there's conditioning which would be like endurance and, and, and like so that would be like low weight high reps yep. then there's like hypertrophy which is going to be heavier weight but still relatively high reps and then there's strength which is that like 10 to 20 rep range total reps in your like 80% uh, of your for max, the workout you're talking for the workout about, yeah. yeah so like you're talking like your four sets of five yeah. your you know three sets of five with heavy weights three sets of six that kind of stuff um, that's like your strength zone and then your power is like you know less than 10 reps with heavy 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 weight so again like when we think about it uh, if we have if we have really strong people here then it's like I'm gonna pull seven or eight times, maybe 10 or 12 times at most, at like top, top, top intensity, yeah. and then do a little bit of back off work, and that should be the day, and that's my heaviest day of the week. After that, it's gonna be either hypertrophy or conditioning. Yeah, you're you know? just trying to cover all your bases within the training week. Yeah, or, or in, even in the training month, you know, again, because we're only training arm wrestling, we're really only training our arms, it's hard to do conditioning, hypertrophy, strength, and power specifically like different days course, or whatever yeah, in a week yeah. right so so like i liked if you saw the w example we did for my workout it's it's kind of spaced out over the workout it starts with some power and strength and then it eventually ends with like conditioning you know mm -hmm. so anyway i 
there's so anyway. many different ways to train, and uh, we're gonna keep trying to figure out what uh, makes the most sense. And, and we're writing all this stuff down, right? Yeah. And, and Toronto will keep kicking ass with all this uh, programming. Yeah, we just keep trying to prove it on the table as yeah. much as we can. Hopefully, the next tournament goes as well as the last one did. Uh, and we're not gonna say when it is, but we will be there, and we will be pulling, and we will be doing our best. So if you like the video, like the video. Leave some feedback in the comments. Share, subscribe, hit that bell. Do all those things, and monkeys out. Peace.